Welcome to Anita the Pedagog channel. Today we continue with our literature lessons. We'll be looking at poetry analysis. We'll be looking at the poem The Color of God by V.B. Archie. He is a Ghanaian poet and he's written a beautiful poem which we'll be analyzing together today. Let's begin. So for our objectives, we will be looking at the title, the structure of the poem, its analysis, we will look out for some literary devices, and discuss the themes of the poem, The Color of God. Now let's begin with the title. So a look at the title on the onset, The Color of God, it gives an impression that the poem is about the true color of God. But then, when you look at the poem critically, you realize that it is only an irony and it drives the listener or reader to decide based on the arguments in the poem as to whether God has a particular color or not. Then you, the listener or reader, will make your decision on the color of God. Let's do this journey together. Again, a deeper thought into the title informs the reader that his or her answer to the color of God should connect with how they perceive themselves and others. Let's move on and look at the structure and form. So when we talk about the structure and form of a poem, it actually refers to the physical structure how the poem looks like in terms of the number of lines and stanzas the length of the lines their readings if there is any or their system of rhymes and repetition if any more often than not it is used to describe poems which have these features obvious or significant now let us take a look at the structure of the poem the color of god so the color of god by vb archie i'll read the poem to you then we'll take a look at its uniqueness its number of lines stanzas and a few others the color of god whoever painted god white he must be black says the black man of course not, he's got to be green, quipped the green man. But that cannot be, he must be red, assured the red one. How wrong you all are, he sure is blue, vows the blue one. How silly man is, laughs the ruse. Why should he be black or white, or green or yellow, or even red? Of course he is all these and more. Can't you see? He is even rose and emerald. Yeah, and damask and aquamarine. If you doubt me, ask the rainbow. Such a beautiful poem. The color of God. So we've already taken a look at the title and how it gives us information about what the poem is going to be about. We'll quickly move on and look at the number of lines. Now if you look at the left hand side you will realize that the poem has been numbered. Now if you count from the initial line, that is from 1 which is line 1. Now remember that poems are written in lines and not in paragraphs. You join me to count. So, one, two, three, four, five. We have an indication of five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's indicated. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. So the color of God is a poem of sixteen lines. Now remember that this particular poem doesn't have any space left in between it to indicate stanzas 
it's all together with no shown space to indicate a stanza and so it is a one stanza poem in addition you realize that as i was reading there are no end rhymes and as i was reading you realize that the poem creates a colorful imagery with the mention of colors and even rainbow it gives an imagery which is so beautiful and you keep picturing these colors and what they're saying in addition if you take a look at the poem very well as i was reading you would realize that it looked like an argument was going on between the colors and then to add to it the poem is in the form of a conversation so you realize that there is a dialogue you realize that the black man is saying that he must be black says the black man of course not he's got to be green quipped the green man there is a conversation going on and it's argumentative because these colors seem to be arguing and not agreeing on the color of God and so when we look at this poem we can confidently say that it is a free verse poem and a free verse poem is a poem which doesn't have a defined pattern defined rhythm and rhymes and this particular poem qualifies for that so I would like us to quickly move on continue and look at its analysis we'll begin our analysis from line 1 to line 4 so the opening lines of the poem begins with an argument between some colors and that is right from the black man so the black man claims God must be black not white as supposed by whoever again you would realize that in line 3 and 4 this claim is refuted by the green man who disagreed and said God is green now as the black man is saying that God is black the green man is saying God is green now we'll move on and look at some further analysis of line 5 and 5 to 9 now there are more characters being introduced the red man disagrees with the black and green man and believes God is red instead now this is getting interesting what do you think is the color of God anyway you can keep your answer to yourself let's move on so in line 7 and 9 we see the blue man and the blue man comes in and swears that God is blue and disagrees with the rest now it appears to me that almost all the colors here don't seem united they are pretty divided and in their own ways they are trying to claim God for themselves now do you think that anybody can narrow God to themselves well let's move on so in line 9 to 15 we see a new twist to the entire argument where there is an introduction of the rose rose here for rose flower the rose comes in and laughs at the foolishness of the rest of the colors and here is presumed the colors are humans so for them to have viewed God as their own skin color alone was somewhat very funny and quite silly from the perspective of the rose now the rose poses some questions to them asking why should God be your individual colors and again that will be trying to limit God to satisfy their own selfish ambitions and that is actually limiting God to a particular race religion or continent again we see the rose goes on to explain the diversity of God in that he is more than what man is limiting him to and here man as in the colors 
who are claiming God for themselves. It goes on to ask man if he does not see the diversity of God. It asks that God is rose and emerald, the mask and aquamarine. And just to bring your mind to this, we all know that the rose even has numerous colors. And so, God, that's why the rose came in to explain the whole concept. Knowing how diverse it is in its own self. Let's quickly go on and look at these other, the emerald, the mask and aquamarine. So, the mask is actually a rich heavy silk or linen fabric with a pattern woven into it. Usually, it's used for table linen and upholstery. And that's a picture of the mask. And it's so beautiful. And this goes on to tell you, you know, the, 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 the complex nature of God and the beauty and diversity that comes with God. Again, emeralds are most highly valued gemstones. And so here, the rose is also trying to tell the rest of the colors and humans for that matter that God is highly precious and also can be seen in this diverse way. In addition, we have the mention of the aquamarine. And aquamarine is actually seawater that's what it means and also its color is a light bluish one with tints of green and so we learn that god is damask god is emerald god is aquamarine god, god can be seen in all these and so god is bigger and greater than what these colors and in this case, humans are saying. Now we look, we're going to look at the final um, line, which is line 16. And here, the rose makes a last submission, which is that the rainbow is evidence for God's diversity. It says, if you doubt me, ask the rainbow. And so the rainbow tells us or shows us that God is diverse, even in one. And in the poem, there is a mention of almost all the colors of the rainbow, with the exception of indigo and violet. Almost all the colors have been mentioned in the poem. Having looked at this, we would progress and look at the literary devices in this poem. So we'll begin with imagery. 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 So when we talk about imagery, we are looking at how the words or the vocabulary in the poem come out life to us using our five senses. And so when we look at the sense of sight, it has been demonstrated in the poem in that it paints a vivid picture of God through the use of color, the mention of the colors and especially the mention of the rainbow that makes you try to have a visual picture of it. Even as you read the words. In addition, there is irony. And there's a verbal irony in the poem when the poet, through the use of color, tries to emphasize that God actually is colorless. Yet, men of all colors try to claim him for themselves or try to accord him a color. Now, by the time you're done reading the poem, there is no particular color that has been accorded to God. You need to make that decision for yourself at the end of the day. Let's move on and look at more literary devices. We have personification, giving an inanimate object a human attribute. And again, we see that in line 9, the rose laughs. And obviously, a rose cannot laugh, it's just a flower. Again, we see the rose accent. Or telling us to act the rainbow if we doubt it again we see the demonstration of personification by according the rainbow an ability to even answer and so these are ways in which this literary device has been used we also see rhetorical questions so we see in 
line 10 why should he be black or white or green or yellow or even red this is a rhetoric which doesn't demand an answer or did not require an answer also you see of course he is all these and more can't you see and again in line 12 and 13 there's been the use of rhetorical question we'll look at the themes of the color of God now the first theme that quickly comes up after you have looked at this point is the theme of global unity and togetherness now this is because the poet you know describes the people of the world with colors and the arguments these colors make show a lot of division of the people of the world and their failure to accept that they are equal and therefore have one God. Now the poem seeks to encourage humanity towards togetherness and unity which will in turn produce peace globally. Also there is the theme of the need for religious tolerance. Again when we talk about God or we mention God you realize that God goes hand in hand with religion so irrespective of our religion there is a need for us to be tolerant as humans so it shouldn't be seen that there are disagreements and war among nations due to religion or ethnic groups we shouldn't see ourselves as different and think that God is different but rather just as the colors and gems are different they were all made by God and so we are all one even in our own uniqueness and so we need to tolerate each other now move on to talk about the last thing that I deduced here it is the avoidance of racial discrimination the arguments of the colors in the poem um, shows that some people believe they are better than others when you look at how the green the red the blue and the blue even vows and says that God should be blue but just as the rules you must have different colors or race but are equal and one created by one God the final line of the poem also tells us to add the rainbow now the rainbow is made of diverse colors beautifully and so is God this implies humans are one despite their race, ethnicity, abilities or skin color. Let's do a quick recap. We've looked at the title of the color of God and how it gives us information about the poem that the poem is definitely going to be about the color of God. We've realized that the poem is a poem of 16 lines as one stanza. In a free verse poem, we've looked at the diction, it's very argumentative and simple English. We've looked at some analysis of the poem to deduce its meaning, some literary devices, and the themes. We have other lessons on Anita the Pedagog channel, which you can look at, it will be useful to you definitely. I hope this lesson was useful to you. Please put in your comments and questions and I'll respond to them. Do like, share and subscribe. Tap the button. Until I come your way again, keep learning and be the best version of yourself.